Hey everybody, this is Keith Nickel, bass man from Orchid, and here to talk a little bit about my influences on the bass and their effects on our most recent album, Mouths of Madness. As I listened to Black Sabbath, really Geezer Butler was the first bass player that I actually think I had like bass worship for. And so I just started studying Geezer Butler, his fingering techniques, and um, mainly his right hand. And I always think of playing the bass more from a right hand than the left hand. And that sounds maybe strange, but um, Geezer Butler had an amazing approach the way he plucked the strings. And I just became very curious and fascinated at what made him tick and how he developed this style of bass playing. And uh, that was very flashy. and. His note choice is melodic and he really stood out and a lot of times bass doesn't stand out and of course somehow that tickled my funny bone and I like this idea of the bass really standing out in music. Geezer Butler's influences when I started kind of learning more about him and reading more about him. Of course Black Sabbath were big Beatles fans so I had to learn about Paul McCartney and uh, Paul McCartney became a great study for me both as a bass player and a songwriter. James Jamerson from the Motown era, guys like Don Duck Don from the Muscle Shoals. Working on Mouths and Madness, there's a few songs that, um, you know, maybe some influences that people wouldn't expect, but uh, Tony Levin was a big influence on the song Leaving It All Behind, and the melodic structuring in that song is very much like a Tony Levin bass playing phrasing that he might have done on a Peter Gabriel album. You know, I draw influences from a lot of places, and try to just let it flow in different songs and not really that might be the most specific song where I had an actual bass player in mind a lot of John Paul Jones in that song too for me and of course John Paul Jones is a bass player he's just one of the all-time great rock, rock and roll bass players and I really love what he did on the bass my influences also spread into Jimi Hendrix and um, the band Gypsies and experience um, Noel Redding is a huge influence on me. Jack Cassidy from the Jefferson Airplane also is a huge influence on me. And that, that influence is an interesting one because that one came sort of indirectly through growing up um, around Jefferson Airplane and Grateful Dead. As a kid, um, my father was a sound on stage guy and I would often be found sleeping. <laughs> and Jack Cassidy had one of these old fashioned conch bass speakers and I would crawl up into the bass speaker and fall asleep during San Francisco Golden Gate Park shows with Ray Dead and Jefferson Airplane. And um, so obviously this somehow, my dad used to tease me and say it was a curse to become a bass player or something like that. Surprisingly, a lot of my influences on bass don't even come from bass players. Um, instru porn instrumentalists like uh, Charlie Parker and Miles Davis and John Coltrane have a huge influence in my bass playing. And then Delta Blues guitarists who just solo guitar players like Charlie Patton and um, of course Robert Johnson doing these, you know, just straight solo acoustic guitar and vocal performances. For some reason these type of musicians and songs that I grew up listening to have a huge influence on my bass playing. So I hope you enjoy this little clip and I hope you enjoy the album Miles of Madness forward to seeing you at a show. Peace out.